We're here today in the Temperate Glass House at the Royal Botanic Garden, Edinburgh, working on a project that was sparked by and then funded by the, Scr the Scottish Crucible. The title is Harvesting Collections for Social and Scientific Benefit, Hidden Stories at the Herbarium of RBGE. And the point is to take objects and histories and people in our collection and open them up to new and different kinds of uses. One of the ways we'll be doing that today is interviewing collector Ian Hedge about his experiences in Southwest Asia. This is a joint project between the Royal Botanic Garden Edinburgh, University of Glasgow, and University of Aberdeen. And we're using master's courses in both in the University of Glasgow and Aberdeen to draw out these experiences and to bring out the stories that are hidden in our collections. Rita Davos was a totally dedicated collector of everything. I mean, he was a major botanical collector, no question. Just before the war in 36, he traveled in Turkey, on a mountain in Turkey, and got fascinated with the flora there. But then he came up to Edinburgh to see the professor at that time, because he was thinking about going on an expedition to South America. So Professor Sir William Wright Smith, the professor at that time, was very taken with this young man and he persuaded him not to follow a career in horticulture but to do, to take a, to do a botany degree. So the war came along, Peter came back to Edinburgh after the war, did his degree here and was appointed as a lecturer in the university. And then in the late 50s, Peter started initiating a flora of Turkey and the East Aegean Islands, a major, a really major project. In 1957, I had six months collecting in Turkey with Peter Davis, and it was hard going, it was tough work, but a major importance. I mean, that was six months, six, seven months collecting, and all the collections in the herbarium here, and they were very important as far as the flora part. Turkey was concerned. His influence in Edinburgh is very hard to overestimate because without Peter, this, all this flora work in, in Turkey would never have happened. And that's, that's a major area of our interest still, still goes on. In the past, it was always China, flora of China, rhododendrons and primulas. That was Edinburgh's big focus for a very, very long time, right, right through till, till Peter came along on the scene. And then in 1962, I had the opportunity to travel with a Norwegian friend, Per Wendelbo, in Afghanistan. Now, Afghanistan in those days, as you probably appreciate, was totally different from what it is today, totally different. Now, often people today get a wrong impression about Afghanistan. They just see Helmand and terrible things and Taliban and destruction. But in those days, it was totally different. There was a king on the throne, Muhammad Shah. You could travel fairly freely throughout the whole country. There were no real problems. In fact, it's a mountainous country, basically. In the extreme northeast of the country, You've got um, 7,000 meters mountains. And they go to the lowest part of Afghanistan, I think, is about 400 meters, something like that. And if you have huge changes in climate as well, you've got temperatures of 50 degrees in the summer and minus 50 in the, in the mountains, an extraordinary range of, of temperatures. So we were very fortunate, and there was this window of opportunity to collect between in the mid-1950s through to about 1970, and then came Soviet invasion and all sorts of terrible troubles. So that, that's really my, my background. One of the most beautiful parts are the, are the blue lakes, the beautiful blue lakes of Bandi Amir. It's very extraordinary, you're traveling in the central part of Afghanistan through pretty bare, barren looking territory, and then quite suddenly, plunk, 
you come across these brilliant blue lakes and they really are brilliantly blue limestone and that's it 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 will become i think a world heritage site it's so beautiful so afghanistan is a, a major area of biodiversity not just in plants but all sorts of living things there are about 400 more than 400 bird species have been recorded from afghanistan you've got snow leopards in the wakan corridor in the northeast of afghanistan so it's it's a it's a great country there are two when when you're making these you're making collections of herbarium specimens which are there forever for 100 years people can study the specimen you're taking photographs of them in the field and you're also collecting some for cultivation people when they dis they, they find new species you usually the latin epithet usually refers either to a person or to a characteristic if you've got yellow flowers it's lutius if it's beautiful it's formosus but we thought no oh, come on let's have something different without our land rover we wouldn't have achieved all this so we dedicated the scrofularia not a very beautiful looking plant incidentally to 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 the land rover so it was formally described as scrofularia land roveri Now, talking about Salvia terracalix, it's one example of the many endemic species, species that are only in Afghanistan. Now, central, that part of Central Asia has a lot of these primitive plants, and that Salvia comes into, into that category. It, it's, it's a real bobby dazzler of a plant. Our prime, prime collections were, of course, for specimens, but we did collect a number of, one, of specimens for horticulture, for cultivation here. Yeah. Uh, two of them, there's two rhododendrons grow in Afghanistan. In the extreme, near the Pakistan border, on Mount Sakaram, you have two species of rhododendron, rhododendron afghanicum and rhododendron coletianum. And they're very, very restricted in their distributions. They may possibly be near extinction. They need to be preserved. So we got seed of them and the cult we have them here still. In order to, for going, going further ahead, if you're conserving things, you want to know what you're conserving. So with plants, you've got to have an accurate assessment of what the plants are, where they grow, and and the future of them. So this is, these floras really, they're, they're huge projects. The number of species in Turkey is something like, I think it's about 8,000. And if you think that in Britain we have 1,500, about 1,500 native species of flowering plants, you appreciate the scale of this thing. And the other thing about which is a very interesting fact, that when the Floor of Turkey project started in, 19, in the early 1960s, there were very few Turkish botanists. And today, after the Floor has been completed, every university in, in Turkey have, has active botanists. So the change is, is quite dramatic. They do their own botany now. So now hopefully that will happen eventually eventually in Afghanistan, but difficult to be optimistic. My German friend Sigmar Breckler decided we should have an up-to-date version for, for the local Afghan people. So this book called The, the um, Natural Vegetation of Afghanistan it's, it's a big book, it's about six, seven hundred pages, profusely in, illustrated, and it's in English and Dari, which is the Afghan equivalent, the Afghan equivalent of, of Farsi, almost 
to between two and three thousand copies of this book were, were distributed throughout Afghanistan to schools, universities, NGOs. So that was a great thing for the future.